just plow us a path. <laughs> These researchers are looking for a bird, but not just any bird. They're looking for the marbled merlet, a bird we know so little about. It's called the enigma of the Pacific. Marbled merlets nest in the canopy of the Northwest's thick coastal forests. So trying to find a nest can involve miles of some of the most miserable bushwhacking around. Right in the mouth. This is a story about how hard science can be. Oh yeah, we didn't go very far at all. It's like, take the needle in the haystack metaphor, but then enlarge the haystack until it's several miles of dense, thorn-filled forest. And imagine that your needle is a small bird on a branch 100 feet in the air. And this isn't even the first step in finding this bird. So let's start from the beginning. Kim Nelson is one of the leading experts on marbled murrelets, and she agreed to meet us at Cape Perpetua, not far from where she met Oregon Field Guide 25 years ago. Marbled murrelets spend most of their lives at sea, but early ornithologists couldn't find them nesting with other seabirds. So they've always been a mystery. In the 1930s and 40s, they suspected that murrelets might nest inland because they hadn't found their nest on the offshore rocks. But it wasn't until 1974 when a tree climber was climbing up a tree to cut off a branch in a campground, and he found a, a murrelet chick on a nest. That was in California. Kim's team didn't find a nest in Oregon until 1990. Marble merlets do not build a nest. They just lay their egg on a branch, and so they need a very large branch. So generally they nest in old growth or mature trees that have large branches. This was all taking place during a battle known as the Timber Wars, over whether to log or preserve the last of the Northwest's old growth trees. So it was a big revelation that merlets needed those trees to nest. The marble merlet's dependency on old growth may one day make the bird as controversial as the spotted owl. And Kim Nelson's data shows the merlet may be further threatened by clear-cutting practices. Environmentalists were able to get marbled merlets listed as threatened in 1992, but their numbers have continued to drop. And it's hard to come up with a plan to save them when we know so little about the bird. Enter the Oregon Marbled Merlet Project. Yay! It's a team of around 20 scientists and field crew based out of Oregon State University's College of Forestry. Yeah, so the Oregon Marbled Merlet Project's core goals are to determine where the birds are nesting, how successful they are, and then what are the key sources of mortality for nests. The things they learn about how different threats, like logging and climate change, affect marbled murrelets could mean the difference between coming up with a plan to save them and the species disappearing without a trace. Even though they're looking for nests in forests, this search begins at sea. They head several miles offshore, where murrelets tend to forage and rest. And they go at night so they can sneak up on the birds. And we also have a capture crew that we contract with who, um, they come up from California. Boats at the water's edge, boats in the water. And it sounds kind of crazy, but we, we put them into a 14-foot inflatable Zodiac and send them out on the ocean. They have a short window near the start of mating season to find enough birds to follow for the summer. But this year, rough ocean conditions have kept them mostly landlocked. So now that the sea is calmed enough to go out, everyone's on edge to salvage the season. Then they see it. But well, usually they'll dive and then you kind of stop the boat. Sometimes you'll see them swimming underwater and you kind of position the boat and using hand directions, you tell, you know, I'm telling the driver, play that way. And you try to get the boat, or yeah, the boat to the point where the bird comes up and then you just scoop it right out. It's an art form. This team literally travels around the world, working for different Merlet researchers. Back on the ship, 
they assess the health of the birds as they come in. Thanks to early research, we know that the fate of marbled murrelets depends on preserving the old growth forest they nest in. But the Marbled Murrelet Project is learning that the bird's fate is just as tied to ocean conditions. Hey Jim, yeah. have we got a recap from last year? In the first year of the project, none of the birds they captured at sea went on to breed. And the scientists think one reason is the many ways climate change has disrupted the ocean food chain. Herring and anchovy have pretty much disappeared from the oceans. And so merlets are feeding on fish that are lower quality. And so that's likely having an impact on nesting success. So they're tracking what the birds eat and what effects that has on their health and reproduction success. The final step is attaching a small transmitter that will allow them to track the birds using what's called radio telemetry. The tag will eventually fall off on its own. I do know if there have been lots of birds here. Um, there's usually a couple here. Yeah. Just as the overnight crew rolls back to the shared houses to crash, Jason Piasecki and Lindsay Adrian head out to the beach with an antenna. Every morning we have technicians up and down the coast listening for all of our birds. They spend most of their time on the water, either foraging or resting. So it sounds like it's diving. Yep. Once a pair of murrelets has laid an egg, they take turns incubating it, trading off every morning. 439 is back on the water today. I think that's possible we may have just missed it. So the technicians are listening for birds that go missing every other day. So we're able to pick up that pattern and then that will tell us that we need to get the plane inland to look for the nest. Out there. So I think Brad today will go all the way up to Cape Lookout and circle around. The aerial technician John Dockenhouse flies up and down the coast, scanning for beeps. All right, so that's a bird. 90 left. The birds can nest up to 50 miles from the sea. As much as we can drop in this drainage over here, Brad, let's do it. What we've noticed is they like to be down in the drainage in these larger trees that have flyways for them to come in to and from the nest. Uh, circle left, Brad. From this bird's eye view, you can see just how much logging has transformed these forests. And they're finding that is a problem for the birds. So one of the big concerns with merlets is edge effects. So how close their nests are to clear cuts or poor stand edges and how much like potential nest predators intrude now that they have access to areas they formerly didn't have access to. The project has learned that red-tailed hawks prey on the nests, in addition to ravens and jays. If you're wondering why this chick is alone, it's because the parents are flying back and forth to bring it fish. They can make eight trips a day, burning massive calories and risking predators themselves. There's little room for error, so it's easy to see why any changes to the ocean or the forest can have outsized impacts. I think if we hike in towards that little spot right there, I think it's less dense. What is it, this way? Yeah. Using right the general road. location obtained from the air, the ground crew moves in. Not feeling too good about this one. That feeling, of course, would prove prescient. We spend several hours plowing through the undergrowth. <laughs> and stopping periodically to listen for the signal from the bird's transmitter. Hmm. Nothing. Ay, ay, ay. Watch it be on the water today. The anxiety grows with each passing hour. Let's do some telemetry here. Okay. I think this is a good spot. Hopefully we can hear it. I can't see Keep it. our fingers crossed. <laughs> oh. There's a bee. <laughs> it's not on the water. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Hooray! Nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, we didn't hike out here for nothing. Do you hear it? They zero in on this stand of trees. But the bird could be nesting on any branch. The only way to know is to see it fly in or out.
during its daily commute. I think we should have like two stations over here and then two people in this gap. It seems like these people will see birds coming across to here. Yeah. Those people will see them coming across to here. That means they're going to have to come back every morning before dawn to watch and watch and watch. We have a gap and you're trying to get that gap in your whole field of vision because it takes like not even a second and the bird is gone. Merlettes have been clocked going 100 miles per hour. This one has slowed down five times. So if the gap in the canopy is small, you could blink and miss it. It took seven trips before they finally saw the bird fly into its nest. It might seem ridiculous. All these people struggling by boat, by plane, and by foot to find a homely seabird that has evolved a peculiar need for big mossy branches. But the fate of the Merlet will help determine the fate of these older trees. More than three million acres of coastal forests are protected from logging to preserve the bird. Yet the timber industry regularly challenges those protections. And there are still so many questions. Like does thinning nearby forests present the same threat as clear cutting them? So both the industry and conservationists are backing the Oregon Marble Merlet project. So Having information allows us to have a better idea of what merlets need and how that can be integrated in management of our coastal forest that allows for, for timber production as well. They set up an antenna on a nearby tree and another crew comes in regularly to monitor the nest. So yeah, it hasn't been consistently on the nest since yesterday morning. Um, so we'll go in and see what we see. They'll know for sure when they check the nearby nest camera. But Chelsea Clocky and Cassidy Rouge don't have high hopes. Three of the four nests they've followed this year have failed. In some cases, they think a predator got the egg or one of the parents. In other cases, the parents might have abandoned the nest due to other disturbances or a lack of food at sea. So this may be their last chance to see a chick. I'm curious to see what we're going to find. I know. <laughs> the mood isn't improved when they find a pile of feathers, likely from a robin attacked by a predator. Yeah, if you lose this many feathers, <laughs> it's a pretty bad day for you. They head to the base of the tree with the nest cam. And log into the feed on a tablet. Amazing. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing actually seeing the chick in the nest. It's it's a little surreal. <laughs> yeah. And not only that, but this is this is incredibly rare footage from a scientific perspective, especially for Oregon. The hope is that their research can inform decisions about how we manage the forests and the ocean that will make this bird a little less rare. The Merlet's a bird of two worlds. So having healthy forests and healthy oceans means that we can also have healthy merlet populations as well.